and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to go through some practice problems involving uh, properties of rational exponents. Okay, first problem I have, 5 to the 1 half times 5 to the 3 halves. I'm going to use my product of a powers property. I have the same base, different exponent. I'm going to add the two exponents together, 5 to the 1 half plus 3 halves gives me 5 to the 4 halves which is the same as 5 squared, which is going to be equal to 25. Problem number 2, 3 to the 2 thirds taken to the 5 halves. I'm going to use power of a power property. So power of a power property. And I'm going to take 3 to the 2 thirds to the 5 halves, which means I'm going to multiply the exponents together. That gives me 3 to the 10 over 6 and I can simplify that to 3 to the 5 thirds. In this case, I want to see if I can simplify it any further, and I can't. So I'm going to leave it as 3 to the 5 thirds, and that's my answer. And I have 4 times 3 to the 2 thirds. And this is going to be power of a product property. So power of a product. And in this case, I'm going to multiply these two values together to give me 12. I have 12 to the 2 thirds. And I see that I have no value that I can take the cube root of. And let's see if I multiply 12 uh, times itself, 12 squared, which gives me 144. And let's see if I have any third roots of 144. So when I go through this process, I'm going to ask myself, do I have any perfect cubes that are equal to 144 or factors of 144? So I ask myself, 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is equal to 8, 3 cubed is equal to 27, 4 cubed is equal to 64, and 5 cubed is equal to 125. So <clears throat> I ask myself, are any of these values, and 6 cubed is equal to 216, I believe. So 216 is greater than 144, can't be a factor or equal to 144. So I'm dealing with these three or four cubed values. I need to add a 5 here. So I'm asking myself, are any of these values, 827, 64, and 125, equal to or factors of 144? And I'm going to go in descending order. So 125 is not a factor of or equal to 144. Uh, 64 is not uh, equal to or a factor of 144. 27 is not a factor of or equal to 144. So that leaves me with 8. 8 is a factor of 144. So if I multiply 18 times 8, then I'm going to get 144. Right, so now I can use my uh, power of a product property again of 8 times 18 to the 1 3rd which is the same as 8 to the 1 3rd times 18 to the 1 3rd and 8 to the 1 3rd is just 2 2 times 2 times 2 is 8 so I get 18 or 2 and let's just rewrite it this way 18 to the cubed root or you can leave it as 2 times 18 to the 1 3rd all right, next set of problems. Simplify the expression using the properties of radicals. I'm going to use my product property of radicals. It says that square root of a times the square root of b is the square root of a times b. So square root of 5 times 2 is the same as the square root of 10. Now in this case, you have to remember that if you're just going to multiply these two values, the index and the uh, power have to be the same. So the index is the same, power is the same. I just multiply the radicands together. If the index and the uh, power are different, then we have another operation, which we'll address at a later time. Okay, so now I have uh, same index, same power, same index, same power. I just multiply these two values together. So 14 times 196. Let me take a look at our calculator. 14 times 196 gives me 2744. Now I'm dealing with 2,744. I'm dealing with a quite large number. So I think what I'd like to do is I'd like to go back and find out if there are any cube roots in 196. 
So we remember 2 cubed is 8, 4 cubed is 64, 5 cubed is 125, and I can see just by looking at it that that's not going to be a factor of 196. So I'm left with 4 cubed, uh, oh, and I forgot 3 cubed as well. 3 cubed is equal to 27, 4 cubed is equal to 64. And I ask myself, are any of these cubed values factors of 196? And I'm going to start in descending order. So I ask myself, is 64 a factor of 196? And it is not. It does not divide evenly or provide me with an integer result when I divide into 196. And I ask myself, is 27 a factor of 196? And the answer is no, it is not. And the last is going to be 8. I ask myself, is 8 a factor of 196? And the answer is going to be no. So 8 is not a factor. So now I'm, I'm going to need to multiply uh, 14 times 196, and I'm going to go through the same process, but I'm going to increase the values that I'm cubing. So I have 5 cubed 125, 6 cubed is equal to uh, 216, 7 cubed is equal to 7 cubed is equal to 343. 8 cubed is equal to 512. 9 cubed is equal to 729. 10 cubed is equal to 1000. 11 cubed is equal to 1331. 12 cubed is equal to 1728. 13 cubed is equal to 2197, 14 cubed, ah, 14 cubed is equal to 2744. All right, so uh, I see that 14 cubed is equal to 2744. I know that 14 times 196 uh, leaves me with uh, 2744. I take the cube root of that value and I end up with 14, so 14 is my result. Okay, moving on to the next problem. So again, I asked myself, um, are there any cube roots in either of these factors? If they're not, I multiply them together and I find out if there are any cube roots as factors in uh, the product of the two values, 2744, and I realize that that value is going to be 14. Okay, simplify the expression, assume all variables are positive, of x to the one-third times x to the four-thirds, again I'm using product to the powers. I'm going to add the two exponents together. I get x to the one-third plus four-thirds gives me x to the five-thirds, and that's my result. Number 14, I'm going to use power of the powers. I'm going to multiply two times two-fifths. That gives me x to the four-fifths. And again, power of the powers, x to the three-halves taken to the one-half gives me x to the three-fourths. Moving on, perform the indicated operation. Assume all variables are positive. In this case, remember, I can only add or subtract uh, radicals if they're like radicals. What's a like radical? A like radical, same radicand. What's the radicand? It's the value underneath the radical sign. Same index, it's this value n. Same power, it's this value m. If I have the same radicand, same index, same power, I have like radicals. In this case, I have like radicals. This is just 1 times the square root of 5 plus 3 times the square root of 5 gives me 4 root 5. 6 root 7 minus 3 root 7, I have like radicals again. Same radicand, same index, same power. Radicand, index, power are all the same. Remember, unstated index is 2, unstated power is 1. So I have 6 minus 6 root 7 minus 3 root 7 gives me 3 root 7. And finally, 2 times the fifth root of 13 plus 5 times the fifth root of 13. I have the same index, same radicand, same power. I end up with 7 fifth root of uh, 13. Okay, last set of problems. Write the expression in simplest form. Assume all variables are positive. I have the square root of 64 x to the third, I can use my product property of radicals to say this is the same as the square root of 64 times the square root of x to the third. 
the square root of 64 is 8. And I can also rewrite this value as the square root of x squared times x. Well, I know the square root of x squared is just x, and that leaves me with just 8x times the square root of x. Uh, now I'm using my uh, quotient property of radicals. I separate these values out. The uh, square root of x to the third over the square root of x to the fourth. Um, I realize that this is going to be the same as the square root of x squared times x, which is equal to x times the square root of x. Square root of x squared is equal to just x. And uh, in, the, in the denominator, I have the square root of x squared times the square root of x squared. And that leaves me with 2x. One of the x's simplifies to 1. And I'm left with the square root of x over x. OK, that's it for applying properties of rational exponents. Come back and talk to me later. Um, or you can visit the supplement uh, section to go over each of the properties of rational exponents in detail with practice problems.